In the city of Toronto, there's a problem with homelessness. No question about that. There are people who need government help and not getting it. However, in order to solve this, the city of Toronto has taken over many hotels. Some of them were really, really nice ones in downtown Toronto, filled them with the homeless. Many of them alcoholics. Many of them have drug problems. Many of them have mental illness problems. What I'm learning from an anonymous source in social working in Toronto is that these people are not only getting three meals a day, a roof over their head, but they're getting the cash that they would otherwise get if they were on the street. That cash is to, intended for a roof and food going to drugs and alcohol. Brian Lilly is a columnist with Post Media. He joins me right now. He's often with the Toronto Sun. And you, you have the columns that are really poignant on this. How is that fair for taxpayers' money to be spent like that by our governments? Well, it, quite frankly, it's not. I mean, this is news to me, and, and it's quite the shocker. But this sort of thing shouldn't be happening. And you're right, some very nice hotels. Hotels that, you know, back when I, I lived in Ottawa and would fly down for several days at a time, some of them I've stayed in. Yeah. And, you know, the, the name brand's been taken off the front. They've covered up the name. No, you know, they don't want to be associated with that. And the whole hotel and the whole neighborhood around it has been transformed. At one, up at Young and Eglinton area, they're selling the furniture in the streets. I mean, they put these guys in the rooms, and the next thing, the lamps and the tables are being sold on the street. Why? Extra money for drugs. Um, down in the Esplanade, in, you know, near the Union Station, near the core, uh, the variety store owner there is saying that he's being robbed on a daily basis. He's robbed blind by the new tenants that moved in next door to what used to be a very nice hotel. So, but what is that fault here? It's not the city, really, is it? Because they're just trying to do a job. I understand that when you're dealing with mental illness, when you're dealing with drug problems, it's the responsibility of the province. The province is not taking its responsibility seriously. I think at this point, like this is all because of COVID. And my guess is that everyone rushed to, to deal with the problem. Right. You know, there's one of the reasons that people are on the streets often is they don't want to go into shelters. Right. And they don't want to go into shelters because they're unsafe, they feel like they'll be attacked or they don't want to give up the drugs and alcohol, and that may be a question. Now with COVID, they said, okay, well, we've got to take over these hotels. I think, what's the phrase? The, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. People just jumped in and said, let's do this, let's do that. No checks and balances, and all sides rushing to help people, obviously in need, yeah. but not saying, okay, well, if we give them the roof over the, over the heads and three meals a day, what do we do about the checks? So, I mean, so people who are living around, as you say, are up in arms, there's very little attention to it. There's nothing you know, really they can do. Outside of the sun, and my colleague Sue Ann Levy has been writing some great pieces on this, you're not getting a whole lot on this. And you're right, the neighbors are upset. Even in progressive neighborhoods, they're just saying, wait a minute, you're changing everything. We've got a problem. We've got a problem. Brian Milley, thanks very much. Three minutes. Our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, recently stood up in the House of Commons and prefaced his remarks by saying, and we will only work from the facts, quote, unquote, and then proceeded to lie by saying Britain was in a horrible, horrible third wave, trying to show, in fact, that Canada was not the worst in the world. Britain, though, had vaccines. Canada did not. And this was not reported in the mainstream Canadian media, the media paid for by Justin Trudeau, all of which I'm telling you is that it's important to have this three-minute interview. Please subscribe, ask your friends to subscribe, and press that PayPal thing so we can continue on to bring you the news you otherwise might not know.